Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, let me correct that. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is going to be this week's Tom's Take. It's going to be a little bit shorter version because I just want to get out an exhortation to all of you. Everyone knows by now that we are in a season of war. Now, when I say that, people don't really want to go there. I understand that. I don't either. We see things that are building up in uh, tensions, uh, especially today regarding the United States and Iran because of the three servicemen that were killed uh, by their proxy warriors. We're seeing everything that's going on along the border. We're seeing everything with Russia and Ukraine. We're seeing the tensions rise in Taiwan. Uh, and we're seeing all this stuff unfolding in the natural. But when I'm speaking of we're in a time and a season of war, we're speaking of that which is happening in the spiritual. Now, Chuck Pierce said something at a War Room Prayer event that I attended this morning. He said something that was very profound and yet very simple. He said, I've done a pretty good cursory review of all of the scriptures over my life. And if there is one word that describes what is happening, it's the word conflict. From the very beginning in the garden to the very end in Revelation, it's all about conflict. It's about the conflict between good and evil between light and darkness, between righteousness and unrighteousness, between justice and what is unjust, between death and life, between all of those things that we know are evil, profoundly evil, and those things that we know are profoundly good. And all throughout Scripture, we see the testimony of the, of the saints, whether in the Old or the New Testament, as God delivers through them his revelation about how to move and act and have their being in the midst of a world of conflict. Because the kingdom and especially the ecclesia, the manifestation of the kingdom in our everyday lives, is the solution. It is that which brings us through the conflict, brings us hopefully to peace. But what's amazing is even if you look at the Hebrew word shalom for peace, it also speaks of conflict because it literally means the authority God has given us to destroy chaos. Wow. Conflict. I may be smiling, but it's not something necessarily to smile about. But we are in it. We are in it. I've met many people over my life that believe that this is the last thing that God ever desired. He wants peace on earth. He announced that at his son's birth. But his peace on earth was the provision of a solution into the midst of the conflict, into the midst of the war between heaven and hell, between light and darkness, between life and death. Jesus is the solution. Jesus in us is the solution. Now, be careful with that because the solution does not necessarily mean that by 3 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon, 20 years from now, the world will be in perfect peace. I hate to be the bummer here, but I don't think we're going to see that this side of Christ's second coming. Because even his second coming is wrapped in conflict. Not the understanding of it, but his second coming will deal with a final blow to the conflicts of the earth. We are in a war. Satan is constantly waging war against us. Now, we can either throw up our hands and say, I surrender, I don't want to be a part of this, or we can say, Lord, here am I, send me. I want to be an instrument in the midst of this. I want to be your solution. I want to be so closely intimate with you that I understand and move with your very spirit and being within me. That is where we need to be. But as he draws us into that place and as we draw close to him, he will reveal to us how we need to act, 
what we need to do or what we need to say, which dismantles darkness, dismantles death, dismantles the structures of evil and Satan's intentions against all of creation and against the kingdom of God. We need to realize that we've been enrolled in an army. You've heard me say on this many times, we're a part of a grassroots movement, which means that not, it's not just up to me. It's not just up to people that are leaders in the nation right now. You know, I love with all of my heart running with and being in covenant with a friendship with Dutch Sheets. But Dutch can't do it by himself. I can't do it by myself. It's a grassroots movement. And he's encouraging us to all step up to this. He's encouraged us all to be what we are meant to be, destined to be, required to be, if we are in an intimate covenant relationship with the King of Kings. So get your army boots on. Take up the sword of the Spirit. Come into a place of intimacy with the King and get ready to battle on his behalf. He needs us to be the voice, the light, the ambassadors. All these words sound familiar? The salt that helps dismantle the evil structures of the earth. Every one of us has a part. No one's left out of this. No one's least important. No one's more important. Except you. You are the most important part of this. That was last week's Tom's Take, remember? What's the most important knot in the net? That would be you. Now let me close with this thought, because right now, this whole week, there is a focus all across the nation and across the state of Texas praying for Texas. But what's going on, how we need to be an instrument for God's blessing in the midst of all of this, and especially what's happening on the border. I've had several people over the last couple of weeks uh, not quiet, not whine, not complain, but yet they bring up, hey, what are we doing about the chaos on the border? And they're asking me. So they're not asking the president. They're not asking a representative or a congressman or somebody in political business or governmental business. They're asking me. So I'm assuming that they're wanting a spiritual answer to this. How are we going to solve this? How, how Are we praying about this? Well, let me guarantee we're praying about it. Well, I was getting ready this morning. I, as I said, I went up to Glory of Zion to be a part of their war room prayers focused on Texas. And as I was getting ready, the Lord spoke very clearly to me. And this is what he said. He said, you tell those that are wondering what we're supposed to do with the chaos that the very prayers that I'm releasing through my ecclesia are causing the chaos. Let that one sink in. Now, we're not causing chaos, which is destructive, but when we do pray, everything that needs to be exposed is exposed. Every deceptive plan, every manipulation, whether it be of government or of governments or peoples or media or whatever structures are out there that are manipulating in order to increase the conflict, God is saying your prayers are releasing a kingdom chaos into the formula. In other words, he's introducing light into the darkness and it's exposing it. It's making it so real, so evident, so out in the open that you can't, you can no longer deny it's happening. And then what do we do? You continue to do it. We continue to to decree and pray and declare and go out on assignment, go out down to the border, go to the rivers and lakes that we've been uh, encouraged to go to. Just do what God calls us to do because it is unraveling darkness and bringing forth his kingdom. We will always have conflict. But I do know the end of the story, y'all. We do win. And we are already winning. I love y'all. Thank you so much. The faithfulness that you bring forth as weapons of warfare for the kingdom of God.
through your praise, through your prayers, through your faithful obedience to the King. Blessings to all of you. Goodbye.